five things that you should already know about Dota 2. But do you? Let's find out in this video if you know these five things coming up. And if you don't, then let me know in the comments which ones you didn't know about. We've done two of these videos already in the past. So if you enjoy this one, check those out. And also, do subscribe to the channel as I am posting very regular. It's a brand new channel. We are growing pretty quickly. So I appreciate all of you guys that have subscribed so far. Anyone else? Get joined in nice and early. I really do appreciate it. Anyway, like I say, you'll probably know most of these things. But hopefully there's something in here that maybe you don't. So let's go. So number one on this list is going to be that if you are in a game where you have someone on your team, say an IO or someone like that, who can move your character and they are getting you killed by force staffing you into the enemy or tethering you into the enemy fountain, you can stop this. And this is kind of useful to know because it happens quite a lot when people are feeding or intentionally feeding this sort of stuff. You can open up the menu here for the, the, the score graph, whatever you want to call this, and then down the bottom, show shared unit control options click on this and then you can actually disable the help here from other people this will stop these people from being able to use any of their abilities to help you out so if someone is tethering to you you can just untick these and they won't be able to do that next time they do it it will say this player has help disabled and you can no longer do this this way, they can't ruin the game for you any more than they already are. They can intentionally feed themselves, but they can't teleport you into the enemy base. That sort of stuff is super useful to know. There's so many heroes in this game that can do this. Pudge can dismember you and spit you out on the enemy. I believe Snapfire can do the same thing. Io can tell you, just keep this in mind. If this is happening, just disable it and they won't be able to do anything else anymore. Tip number two is kind of incredibly useful for a lot of situations. Many people don't know this because I think it is a recent change. At least it has been since I returned to the game. I'm, I'm pretty certain. That is a Heaven's Halberd no longer or does not get dispelled by a BKB. So if you're getting shot to shit by the enemy carry, obviously this guy is doing a lot less damage than you normally would. But if you're getting shot like this, you can Halberd them. And then if they BKB, they're still disarmed. That full duration to stay, making Halberd such a strong freaking thing to have against any carry. If there's a troll warlord beating the living shit out of you, you can still Halberd them. And then if they BKB, it doesn't matter. They can't do anything. It's hilarious. You can still get full advantage of that Halberd. This is a incredible item to get. And honestly, if the enemy carry is doing stuff like this and it is someone who just wants to run you down, then you should take advantage. Grab yourself a Halberd and just do it nice and early. Even if you have something like um, an Aether Lens as well, this obviously is going to make casting it so much easier too. Where's my thing? So we've got ourselves an Aether Lens. Obviously, we can cast it even further now. We can, we can cast this a hell of a long way. They are not going to be able to BKB in time, and that puts them out of action for a pretty damn good amount of time. Halberd is so strong, take advantage of it. Next up is knowing that if you teleport to a tower and other allies teleport to that tower as well, your teleport duration is going to be longer than the base three seconds. Now, of course, teleporting to the outpost is always going to be five seconds anyway, no matter what. But if you teleport to, say, for example, the bottom tower here, and then someone else teleports directly there, you're going to notice an increased duration in teleport time. This is quite important to think about when you are ganking or teleporting in on somebody. For example, if I teleport with Windrunner now, you're going to notice the teleport is, two, is just three seconds. Axis was 4.5. And then the next one is 5.5 and then the next one is nearly six seconds and then the next one is going to be 6.5 seconds it seems so these take a lot longer and as you can see these are taking a hell of a long time to get there and this can make a big difference when trying to gank or initiate if you are if you know that your mid is going to go and gank down bottom lane for example I'm Windrunner mid, I'm way ahead in levels, and I can just teleport directly in front as far as I can towards the enemy because they're pushed up here, and I can chase them down. However, if I tell my team that I'm going to do that, and then someone else decides I'm going to go first, and then they teleport first, even in the bushes or something like this, and then I do this, obviously there's now a 5.5 second teleport for me to get here, and the enemy's just going to freaking run away. They've got no problem, they can just run. So obviously, if someone's going to gank, maybe let them go first and then you follow in afterwards because you can affect their teleport timer and that can completely change absolutely everything. And like, as you can see, every time I do this, the teleport timer keeps going up and it'll keep going up every single time that I do it until you get to something crazy like 10 seconds and 10.5 seconds and 11.5 and then 12. It goes up every single time you teleport. Keep this in mind. This is something that a few people don't realize, but uh, it's definitely, it definitely can lose or, or get you kills in games. 
This next one, I've had a few people actually ask me in game how I did this. If I'm playing mid lane and the enemy mid laner is out of vision, but I still want to pull creep aggro for any reason whatsoever, what you can actually do is if you can see an enemy on the map anywhere else, we're gonna have to wait for a creep wave for me to show you this, but if you can see a uh, enemy on the map anywhere else, you can actually put the attack command on them and you'll still pull creep aggro. For example, these creeps are not attacking me right now, but if I attack this axe up here, You'll see these creeps still chase me away and I can still pull the lane in any way that I want to. So you don't have to actually target someone nearby. You can still pull creep aggro doing the same thing. Now I do this quite a lot uh, in mid, for example, and also if I'm using Razor to farm with his ags, not his ags, his, his, uh, his shard, his aganim shard, um, but also with axe as well. It works really well with axe too, because obviously with axe, you might want the, the enemy creeps to hit you first so that you can actually have them attacking. So you can come down to the lane and if your creeps are stopping them from focusing on you, you can attack the other target up on the other side of the map and that'll pull the aggro, whoops, and that'll pull the aggro onto you instead of onto them. So you can do this, you can attack this target and then you can come back and they're going to go onto me and then I get my counter helix just like that. Super useful to know and it's definitely something you can take advantage of in many different situations. Okay, finally nice and easy. Many people are going to know this one, but you should do anyway. And that is in the settings and hotkeys, you can actually have unit specific hotkeys. Meaning if I want to play Meepo, for example, if I change this down to Meepo, 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 we can search it because I can't see it. Uh, for example, here, you can see that they can be completely different in here and you can change all the other things to fit nicely. Now, if you want a certain hero that has a quick cash, you can do this. If you think that it's better to have different keybinds for different abilities, you can do this. And then when you change back to another hero, it will remember those keybinds for you, meaning that you, you don't have to keep changing your keybinds when you play different heroes. It'll remember it forever. Uh, it's just super convenient, especially when playing micro units. In my opinion, I used to have my Meepo set up differently. Uh, it's not quite the same anymore. I used to have uh, like tabbing through different heroes as a different thing. Uh, and so having the specific hotkeys was definitely really helpful to me. If you didn't know this, take advantage of it. It's incredibly freaking helpful. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this one. So hopefully you did find something useful in here. If you did, then please do let me know which ones you found useful or which ones were new to you. And if there was nothing, but you know other things that people maybe don't know about, then do let me know about that too, because I'm sure other people will find it incredibly useful to learn as much as possible. That's the good thing about Dota 2. There's so much stuff in game. You're kind of always learning. Like there is always something to learn. And whenever I pick up on it, I will be absolutely happy to share that with you guys. So comment down below. Also do subscribe to the channel, please. As like I said, we are growing the channel. It's growing pretty quickly in my opinion. I appreciate everyone who already has. And other than that, guys, I will catch you all in the next one. Poor little axe getting bound like that all the freaking time. Anyway, <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye.